welcome to South Fayette Township High School. We are looking forward to the 2021-2022 school year and are so pleased that you'll be joining us for an exciting year of learning and achieving. The information presented today is pertinent to the scheduling process and student course request process. At this time, I would like to introduce our team. To my left is high school assistant principal, Mr. Robert Butts. Also joining us are our counselors, Mr. David Hausman for last names A through K, Mrs. Julie Martin for last names L through Z, and Mrs. Emily Shero, who is our college and career counselor. Their contact information is also listed on this slide. To graduate from South Fayette Township High School, students need a total of 25 credits. Those credits are comprised of four credits in English, four credits in social studies, three credits in science, including biology and chemistry, and three credits in math, including algebra one, geometry, and algebra two, as well as one to two credits of the same foreign language. Please note that students must complete at least level two of the same foreign language. Additionally, students are required to take a half a credit of Excel in the 10th grade, a half a credit of presentation applications in the 9th grade, a half a credit of Phys Ed, and that is broken into a quarter credit each in grade 9 and grade 10, a quarter credit of Health in the 10th grade, a quarter credit of Writing and Public Speaking in the 9th grade, a half a credit of College and Career Planning in the 11th grade, and additional electives will total 4.75 to 7.25 total credits. These can be made up of elective credits or students can elect to go to Parkway West Career and Technology Center. The final credit is comprised of one credit for the senior exit interview. Again, to graduate from South Fayette Township High School, students are required to achieve at least 25 total credits. 24 of those credits are from coursework, and the final credit is from the senior exit interview, which is completed during the senior year of high school. Students must also meet the Act 158 state requirements regarding the Keystone exams. The counselors will be working with students individually to discuss each of these five unique pathways. We encourage you to review the information provided in these slides. But to provide you with a brief overview of those five pathways that the counselors will work with students individually on, that information includes option one, the Keystone Proficiency Pathway. Option two is the Keystone Composite Pathway. Option three is the Alternate Assessment Pathway. Option four is the Evidence-Based Pathway. And the fifth and final pathway is the Career and Technology Education pathway. Again, there is ample information provided in these slides, but each of the counselors will be working with your child to determine the best pathway to meet the Act 158 graduation requirements. A few items of note. Students must take at least six and a half total credits in each grade level. Starting this year, all students are permitted to take a half a year or a semester of study hall. This is a change from years prior, and we've now opened up the half a year study hall to freshmen and sophomores. Students in grade 11 and 12 are permitted to take one year of a study hall if they take at least two or more advanced placement courses. Students should pursue the most rigorous coursework of which each student is capable. Scheduling information is also posted on the high school website and forms are also available in the counseling office if paper forms are needed. Criteria for honors classes includes the following. An 80% are better to, say, to stay in the same level class. This means moving from honors to honors or AP to AP. An 85% or better is required to move up a level. So an example would be moving from a regular level class to an honors level class, or moving from an honors level class to an advanced placement level class. A 
is the minimum needed to move up two levels. An example of this would be moving from a regular level class to an advanced placement level class. Students also are required to have the teacher recommendation and all students enrolled in honors level and advanced placement classes are required to complete summer work. A letter pertaining to the summer work will also be sent out before the end of the school year. When students are scheduling, each student should very carefully consider each of their choices. Consideration will be given for misplaced students based upon the following four criteria. The summer assignment is completed on time and turned in. The students sought additional help in after school tutoring from the teacher. All assignments and tests are completed and reflect the student's best effort. Or the teacher recommends alternative placement. Those are the criteria for schedule changes if needed. Again, our program of studies book and all scheduling materials are now posted on our high school website. At this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to both of our counselors, Mr. Hausman and Mrs. Martin, to share additional pertinent information with you. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Martin. I am one of the high school counselors and I'm going to talk about the ninth grade uh, classes that are available and that you will be choosing from. So first to begin with, when you come to the high school, there are seven academic classes during the school day. And as a freshman, six of those seven classes are already determined based on the graduation requirements. So you will have an option between taking an academic regular class or an honors level class. One of the questions, I would say the most frequent question that the school counselors often get from students and parents is, how many honors level courses should I take or should my child take? And it's really hard because there's not a definitive answer that we can give you because it is personal. So in making this decision, first I think it's important to realize that honors level courses do involve more work outside of the classroom, they are taught at a faster level pace, um, more reading and more writing intensive as well. So one of the things, knowing that information, and you have to also consider that you are transitioning from the middle school to the high school. So something that parents and students should really keep in mind is, you know, what is best for me might not be what's best for my friends or my neighbors. And the things that students should consider is what is my natural aptitude or ability in that certain subject? What are my strengths, for example? If math is something that I'm very good at, then I would really consider taking that honors level math course. Um, consider interests, the things that you're interested in taking, as well as your dedication as a student. You know, are you willing to devote more time to your studies outside of the classroom? Another thing that really needs to be taken into consideration is your extracurricular commitments. You know, how many sports do you want to play? Are you going to be involved in the musical or clubs? Do you have a job? Um, do you have family responsibilities? Do you volunteer? You know, there's only so many hours in a day. And students need to be cognizant of, you know, what do I want out of my high school experience? So, you know, you want to have a balance, a healthy balance between your um, academics, your extracurricular commitments, your ability to spend time with family and friends as well. So I think it's a conversation that each you know, parent needs to have with their child when planning their courses coming into the high school. And it's also important to note that when you get to high school for the first time, the grades that you start earning from the first quarter do get recorded and they do not go away. So they do get averaged into your overall cumulative GPA, which is what is reported on your transcript when you're applying to post-secondary schools. So sometimes we have students, they want to take on all those honors level courses, and we encourage students to try that, but it can be too much for the student. So sometimes a student will take four honors courses and they have, a, they have a very difficult time managing everything that goes into that and as a result the GPA may suffer and you have to then work the, in the future years to build that GPA up. I think it's better sometimes to start out with maybe one honors class or two honors classes to make that transition to high school and get a solid GPA foundation and then move forward by taking more honors and eventually AP level classes. 
Also, from the college perspective, on the transcript, it's better to see that forward progression rather than going backwards. It's better to see the student took two or one honors, then they moved up to four, uh, versus taking four honors and then moving to no honors the following year. So finally, the other things um, students really need to look at is their ability to manage their time, their organizational skills, and their ability to manage their stress levels. In terms of the foreign language, um, one thing to consider is you've been taking the same language 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. So over a three-year period, you've been taking German, Spanish, or French, and that is considered level one. And I know it's every other day. However, when you get to the high school, you will take level, if you take level two, it will be every day. So it is going to move faster and be more involved. If you are at the 75%, which is the requirement to take level two of the foreign language, if you are at that minimum, I would really encourage you to speak with your foreign language teacher, have an honest conversation if it is in your best interest to move to level two as a freshman. Um, because if you're struggling now at that 75, you're going to struggle at level two. Um, okay, and then also you, that leaves one credit for electives. There are only three electives that are one year in length, which would be band, orchestra, and chorus, we can guarantee those electives. If you are not taking one of those electives, you will have the choice to take two semester electives. We will ask that you enter your elective choices, but please understand that electives are not guaranteed. Um, we try to honor your requests, but you have to understand that seniors schedule first, followed by juniors, then sophomores, and then freshmen. So it's very possible that one of the electives you really want to take as a freshman is closed because it has been filled. There will be plenty of time throughout high school to get your preferred electives. If you end up with an elective that you absolutely have no interest in, you will be able to meet with your counselor. The counselor will provide you a list of all the electives that are offered that period. And if it's open, you can switch your elective. However, please understand we will not rearrange your core classes to accommodate any elective choices. And the last thing I want to mention for freshmen, you have the opportunity to attend Parkway. If Parkway is something that you are choosing to do, you will take your Parkway program and you will take your civics class at Parkway. You will then take three classes at South Fayette, which will be the biology class, English 9, as well as your math class. So the classes freshmen take would be English 9 or Honors English 9, Civics 9 or Honors Civics. One thing to note, if you take Honors English, you will also take Honors Civics and vice versa. They are, the two are connected. So you cannot take English 9 and Honors Civics, or you cannot take Civics and Honors English. You need to qualify for both to take both. Um, all freshmen take biology or honors biology, and then the math, it depends where you are in your math sequence. Some freshmen will take Algebra 1, some freshmen will take Geometry or Honors Geometry, and some freshmen will take Algebra 2 or Honors Algebra 2. And then I already mentioned the foreign language, and the three required electives that all freshmen take would be presentation applications, which is every day for one semester, and then gym and writing and public speaking, which alternate every other day for one semester. And then finally, you have the one spot left for electives, and that could be band, orchestra, or chorus, or it could be two electives that are a semester each, and you also have the option to do one semester of a study hall. Please know that a study hall, um, you do not earn a grade. There are no GPA points associated with that. Um, but it would be an opportunity to get work done, um, start studying, complete projects, or even just decompress during your day. Thank you, Mrs. Martin. Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Hausman, one of the school counselors here. I want to talk to you today about the English 10 class and the World Cultures class. You will have the option of taking either regular English 10 or regular World Cultures. These classes are connected, so that works vice versa as well. If you take the honors level English 10 and the honors level world cultures, um, it is important to remember that these classes are connected. So you do have to take the honors level or the regular classes. For math, whatever math you are currently in, you will move to the next math in that sequence. So for example, if you're currently in geometry, you will then move to regular Algebra 2, 
or you will move to Honors Algebra 2. So for your science class this year, uh, you'll be taking regular chemistry or you'll be taking the honors level chemistry, depending on your teacher recommendation and your grade in that class. You will also be taking Excel, which will be a graduation requirement. And also, you'll be taking Phys Ed and Health, which are both quarter credits and will be taken every other day. You also have room in your schedule for a credit or two of electives. Uh, and it is important to remember that this depends on what you want to do after graduation. So try to think of some classes that you are interested in and that align with your possible major. I am now going to pass it over to Mrs. Shero, who will be talking about the foreign language requirements in regards to college. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Shero. I'm the college and career counselor at the high school. In regards to the foreign language requirement, so as Dr. Hartzell mentioned and Mrs. Martin mentioned as well, to um, meet one of the South Bay graduation requirements, you have to pass through level two of a language. So if you as a freshman right now are in your level one, so let's say you're in level one Spanish, um, you are passing with a 75%, you should be moving on to level two. If you are a freshman right now and you're already in your level two, so let's say you're in Spanish two right now and you're passing with a 75%, you have a decision to make. If you want to be finished with your language for high school um, or if you want to go on to level three. So when you're making that decision, there's a couple things to consider. So the first thing you should really consider is what's your plan for after high school? If you're considering going on to college or a university, um, please know that there are many colleges and universities that have foreign language requirements or recommendations for admission. So those requirements can vary depending on which school or which college you're considering. Um, some schools may only need one unit of a language. So if you're in Spanish too right now and you pass that, you would have that one unit of a language. But many other colleges require two or three units of a language. So if you pass your Spanish 2 class this year um, and you move on to level 3, Spanish 3, then you would have two units of that language and you would be meeting that college's requirement or recommendation of having two units. You may not know yet what schools you're looking at, um, you know, what colleges you want to apply to, but I would suggest researching a couple schools that maybe you've heard of that you might be interested in to check out what their requirements are as you're making this decision. If you want to finish with your level two and be done, or if you want to continue on to the level three. The other thing to think about, um, and Mrs. Martin mentioned this whenever she was talking, is the grade and how you've been performing in that class. So if you have really struggled this year in your level two and you're just making that 75% and this is a class that you really haven't enjoyed coming to every day, really think about if level three would be a good decision for you to make um, before you, know, you put that request into, into power school. Talk with your teachers um, to get their feedback. They know you as a student, they've seen you in class. Um, and they can give you insight to what the next level of that language is going to look like. Talk to your parents, and you could always talk to your counselors as well. Thanks. All right, so in terms of 11th grade scheduling, there's a few things that um, change for 11th graders. So for the first time, your schedule really will open up. Um, there's only one required elective that you need to take in the junior year, and that is college and career. So this will give you a lot more space in your schedule for electives. This is a very good time in the junior and senior years to take electives that allow you to explore possible career interests or just raise awareness about careers. Also, I'm gonna go through um, the requirements that are on the slide as I go. So in the 11th grade, you will take English 11 and the option would be our regular academic English 11, Honors English 11 or the AP English 11. So for the first time, you have AP classes available. Also for the first time, the English and the social studies are not connected. So you can take Honors English and regular American cultures, or you can take AP English and Honors American cultures. 
So in terms of AP classes, it stands for Advanced Placement, and these are college-level courses that are taught at a college-level pace. So it is going to be another step up um, from honors, and you can expect to be doing more work outside of the classroom because a lot of material is covered and it's at a faster rate. So there's more reading, there's more writing, there's more preparation, there's more research, there's more analysis. Um, I would consider, you know, again, this is similar to like how many honors classes should I take? How many AP classes should I take? So there's no, um, there's no right answer because again, it depends on you as a student. What's your motivation level? What are, you should be taking classes that you're very interested in and that you, it's one of your strengths. Uh, if you struggle with math, it's probably not the best idea to be taking the AP level mathematics class. Um, so you need to think about also, you know, your ability to manage your time, to manage your um, stress level, to, to organize yourself. Because the other thing is you are taking college level classes, but you are on a high school schedule. So you are in school from 7, 10 till 2 o'clock, and then you have your extracurricular commitments, such as sports or activities, clubs, um, work, volunteering. That obviously adds more hours to your day, and then you figure for each AP class, there's homework involved in that. So there's only so many hours in a day, and you really do have to consider that. When you are in college, some days you may only have two classes. You know, you might have a class at 11, and then maybe a class at 12.30 and that's it for the day. So there's a lot more time to devote to the reading and the writing and the research than there is in the high school day. So also with AP, you will take an advanced placement test in May and that is a standardized test that every student who's taking that AP course will take. Depending on your score, it's up to the university that you are attending into, in terms of what they will do with those credits, if they will award credits or if they won't award credits. Typically, you need a four or a five on an AP exam to receive credit. Again, that's not up to the AP program, it's not up to the high school, it's up to the college or the university that you are going to go to to determine how or if, like I guess if and how those credits would be applied. The other option is a college and high school class, and these are classes typically through the University of Pittsburgh where you are taking our classes that have been approved by the University of Pittsburgh. So our teachers teach the class, and then if you decide, you, you have probably, I think, I think you need to make a decision in October if you want to pay for the credit, and your CHS teacher will discuss this option with you, but it is at a very good rate because you are a high school student, so it is a reduced tuition. But if you choose to make the payment for the credit, at the end of the school year, the teacher, our South Fayette teacher, will submit your grade to the University of Pittsburgh, who will then award you with those three credits. And that can then go towards the University of Pittsburgh, or those credits can be transferable to other colleges or universities. If you have questions about you know, AP versus the college and high school classes, you can ask your teachers, or you could also ask um, your high school counselor. The other thing worth mentioning is please, 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 when you are making a decision, if you want to take, for example, should I take AP English? A lot of students want to come and ask their school counselor, and the school counselor is going to tell you, you need to talk to your teacher first. You should talk to the current teacher. So if you're in Honors English 10, and you're thinking about AP English 11, you need to ask your current teacher because they see you every day. They know your work ethic. They know the quality of your work. They know how you do on tests, and they know the curriculum. They are the best person to help guide you in your decision about taking an AP level class. Just want to caution you not to overschedule yourself. As I've already said, please be mindful that once you choose a class, it's hard to go back a different to another level. Um, the other option for the junior year is you can now double up in sciences for those of you who are interested in a science related field. So you can take two sciences in your junior and senior years. Um, AP chemistry and AP biology are both two periods. One period every day is the lecture, the next period is the lab, and then the labs are every other day. So the days that you don't have a lab, you have a study hall. So you would not be able to take AP Chemistry and AP Biology in the same year.
because that would be four periods of your day. So as a junior, you also get to choose your science. We require that you take and pass biology and chemistry. As a junior, you have several options. You could take chemistry two, you could take forensic science, you could take honors human anatomy, as long as you have the requirements. It involves your biology and chemistry grades. You can take um, physics or honors physics, AP biology or AP chemistry. I just wanna explain though, if you plan to take AP physics, you can only take AP Physics in your senior year, provided you take Honors Physics. If you take regular Physics as a junior, you will not be able to take AP Physics in the senior year. I think I've hit on everything I need to talk about. Just in summary, English, American cultures are not connected. Um, you have the option of a third science, more electives. And finally, um, there's the option of the CCBC Aviation Program, which information was already presented. If you want more information or you think this is something you're interested in, you can reach out to your respective school counselor, as well as Parkway. You can still choose to go to Parkway as a junior. If you haven't attended as a freshman or sophomore, again, please reach out to your school counselor if you want to talk about transitioning to Parkway in the junior year. Thank you. Now we will discuss your 12th grade classes. You will have the option of taking English 12, Honors English 12, or AP English 12. You also have the option of taking Regular Economics, Honors Economics, or AP Economics. Please remember that these two classes are graduation requirements for South Fayette High School. You will have the option of taking two to five elective credits. It is important to think about what you want to do after graduation and try to align your electives to your interest after high school. You can also continue with your Parkway program, which will be a four credit program. Plus, you will also be responsible to complete your senior exit interview. More information about this will come out in the spring of your senior year through your English classes. Okay, so I've met with um, all the juniors in their junior meetings and something we've been talking about and I just want to reiterate quickly is um, the science and math. So if you have already had your three sciences and had your three maths up through Algebra 2, um, you don't have to take a science and math your senior year. However, if you are going to continue on to college after high school, we would strongly recommend that you do take another math and you do take another science. Um, in addition to that, take a look at the schools that you're interested in that you think you might apply to to see if there's a required science class. Does this college want you to have physics and you haven't taken physics yet? You should register to take physics. You know, if they're looking for you to have Algebra 3 with trigonometry and you haven't taken that class yet, use your senior year to do that so that you're meeting your requirement. So again, please take a look at those schools that you're interested in see what they require, and if you are continue on to, continuing on to college after high school, we strongly recommend that you take another science and math. All right, so at the end of the school year, you will be getting your schedule. Couple things I just want to point out. Number one, when you get your schedule, please look at it. Please make sure that you have a, a class scheduled for every period. Please make sure you have a lunch on your schedule. Please make sure you're in the right class. So if you're supposed to be in English 12, please make sure it says English 12. That's first. If there is an error on your schedule, you will be able to reach out to your school counselor and make them aware that there is a problem. Okay, the next thing I wanna make you aware. If you were able to schedule for an honors or an AP level course at the time of scheduling, but by the end of the school year, your grade has dropped below that required grade. Um, your teacher will notify you and the teacher will also let your school counselor know and then your school counselor will make that change in your schedule. So we will simply remove you from the AP or honors class and replace it with um, the next, you know, if it's AP, we can put honors in there. If it's honors, we can put in the academic regular course. Also, on the other hand, if you were not able to schedule for an AP or an honors class at the time of putting in your course request in April, but now you have the grade requirement at the end of the school year, there will be a Google form that you can complete to indicate that you now have the grade, 
and the recommendation and you would like to be scheduled for that course. Your school counselor will then make that adjustment in your schedule and then you will be able to pick up this summer work for that course. Uh, in terms of electives, if you are scheduled for an elective that you're really not happy about, there will also be a Google form circulated with a list of all the electives that are available each period and you will be able to complete the Google form indicating the elective you would like to switch it for. It will have to be an elective that is offered during the same period. We will not be able to rearrange core classes to accommodate elective choices. And the last thing is we will not be making changes for lunch periods. So if you're scheduled for period eight, but you want period six, we will not be making um, those types of schedule changes that involve lunch periods. All right, I think that is everything. Um, thank you so much for your patience. I know that this is a lot of information um, that, that you were given today, but hopefully you can go back and look at the parts that really apply to you. And if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Mr. Hausman or myself and make sure you talk to your teachers. Thanks so much, and uh, we're looking forward to a 2021-2022 school year. Picking up with the career shadow slide, the Career Shadow is a mandatory experience for all students in grades 10 and 11. The Career Shadow is now an interview experience with a professional in the career field of the student's interest, which is now going to be an assignment in the 10th and or 11th grade English class during the fourth quarter marking period. The next slide is a list of our college and high school courses. Honors Calculus, AP Calculus AB and BC, Honors Statistics, Advanced Placement Government, Advanced Placement European History, Honors American Cultures, College and High School Argument, Honors Linear Algebra, which is also the CHS course, Leadership Two, French Four, German Four, and Spanish Four, Multimedia Three, Honors Management, and Advanced Placement French. This slide shares a list of our current advanced placement courses. They include AP Calculus AB, AP Calculus BC, AP English Language and AP English Literature, AP European History, AP US History, AP Economics, AP Government, AP Spanish, AP French, AP Biology, AP Chemistry, AP Physics, AP Music Theory, AP Computer Science, and AP Computer Science Principles. We also have online courses, which I'll describe in the next few slides, that also offer AP Statistics and AP Psychology online. As I mentioned, we do have online courses, and students are eligible to take these online courses starting in the 10th grade. We offer both a full year and a semester year classes with a maximum of one credit for online courses per year. Students cannot select from any courses that we currently offer within our brick and mortar setting at South Fayette Township High School. These online courses are also very separate from any cyber program that may come to fruition. I know at this point in time, you've received an initial cyber survey. If there is any pertinent information to share about any cyber program, I will certainly share that information. But please know that these online courses are something entirely and very separate. These online courses are offered primarily through the Seneca Valley School District's online program, which is Edgenuity, or another provider such as Edgeseer or the University of Missouri. The cost for these courses is the responsibility of the student and parent. The only exception is if students are taking an online personal finance class if they have concurrently scheduled advanced placement biology and advanced placement chemistry. Students must complete an online form including a parent signature and submit this with their course selection sheet. Again, the cost of these online courses is the responsibility of the student and parent, and these courses are only courses that are not offered at South Fayette Township High School. Please see your school counselor for additional information. Parkway West Career and Technology Center is an optional program for interested students. 
In this program, students will take four credits at Parkway. Three core credits here at South Fayette are completed, plus one academic credit is taken at Parkway. In grade nine, the academic credit is civics, which is completed at Parkway. In grade 10, principles of technology, which is a science class, is completed at Parkway. And in grade 11, chemical properties is completed at Parkway. Students will take three credits before leaving South Fayette to go to Parkway. And currently, our plan for the next school year is to have students attend Parkway in the afternoon. Please note that this is a change from each previous school year. Students will take math, English, and biology here at South Fayette in grade nine. In grade 10, they'll take Excel, Phys Ed, and Health, as well as their English and math. In grade 11, they'll take their English and math and American cultures here at South Fayette. And in grade 12, they'll take economics and English, and they'll have an opening for an elective if they so wish to choose an elective. Applications are available online and in the counseling office. Please see your school counselor for additional information. CCBC is another optional program for aviation. CCBC students will take 14 credits as juniors at the Parkway campus. Three credits include the introduction to aviation and pathways, as well as a Titan transition. They'll also take seven credits of private pilot flight theory, three credits of aeronautical knowledge, and one credit for Titan transition. For CCBC students that are seniors, they'll take 14 credits at the Parkway campus, and these credits are comprised of three credits of the history of aviation, four credits of statistics, four credits of aircraft engines and systems, and three credits of human factors theory. Again, applications are available in the counseling office, and there is a cost associated with this program that is the responsibility of the student and parent. Picking up with a slide on dual enrollment. Dual enrollment is another optional program. This is an opportunity to earn college credits while in high school. Students are able to take classes during the day, in the evening, on the weekends, or in the early summer session. Dual enrollment is completed in partnership with local colleges and universities for both the fall and the spring semesters of 2021 and 2022. Dual enrollment is open to both juniors and seniors. Individual qualifications from each college to enter the program and remain in the program are established. One credit from South Fayette is awarded for successful completion of a three credit college course. The grade from the college course is not included in the South Fayette GPA calculation. Students are also not eligible to take a course that is offered at South Fayette. One additional note is that students are responsible for their own transportation and are also responsible for their tuition payment and fees and must be in current compliance and good standing with South Fayette graduation requirements. Students are also not permitted to accrue more than seven total credits per academic year while at South Fayette. Independent study is another optional program open to juniors and seniors only. This is an option to pursue a personal goal related to academic enrichment, career planning or preparation, and also community service. Students are encouraged to explore a program that meets their individual needs. And some of those examples include working with children at one of our elementary schools, creating individual options in art, volunteering in the community, or interning with a local business or organization. Students must complete independent study packets and submit them with their course selection sheets. For next year at South Fayette, we have a number of new courses listed on the new courses slide. They include college and high school, introduce, introduction to film, advanced placement, studio art, graphic design, ceramics, sculpture, introduction to art, advanced art, art survey, Adventure Education, Wellness Through Movement, Advanced Physical Education, and Advanced Microsoft Office Specialist. Please note that all the details, grades that are, these are open to, and also the credit value are also listed on this slide. 
we have several changes as well. String Orchestra is open to students in grades 9 through 12 with prerequisites being met and is now offered on A or B days for the school year. Excel has been renamed and is now Data Management with Excel. Presentation Applications now has an added career focus. Multimedia 2 has been changed from a semester course to now a full year course. And Lifetime Fitness can only be taken for one semester per school year. The art elective is Draw, Paint, and Sculpt. A reminder about summer's work, that summer work is assigned for honors level and advanced placement classes. If a student is taking only an honors elective, such as honors business management or honors statistics, then the summer work must be completed. Summer work will be available on Canvas, and as I mentioned earlier, a letter will be sent out prior to the end of the school year with details about summer work. A reminder that all students must pass the state mandated assessments. This includes the Keystone exams. The Keystone exams are given at the end of the courses for Algebra 1, English 10, and Biology. If proficiency is not met after three attempts, students will be required to complete our Keystone portfolio, and we would notify those students on an individual basis. If exams are not passed by the end of the first semester of the senior year, students will attend a mandatory after-school tutoring session to complete the portfolio and demonstrate proficiency. Another reminder that our scheduling checklist and important scheduling information and procedures is available online at our website. Please ensure that you're carefully re reviewing the course selection sheet and any documents about scheduling online on our website. Tentatively, our PowerSchool online selection will be done by students April 19th through the 23rd. Please note that the teachers have already made their recommendations online through the PowerSchool portal. If students are recommended for the course and have earned the average grade needed, then the course will be available for the student to choose online when they complete the course scheduling process. Again, this is tentatively scheduled for April 19th through the 23rd. In-person students will enter their course requests, then print their online course sections at home. Those forms should be signed by both the student and the parent and returned to the appropriate English teacher for your son or daughter by April 26th. Those students that are cyber will follow the same procedures. However, since they are not in person, they will not return the form to the English teacher and rather they should scan or email a picture of the signed form with their course requests on it to schedulehs at southfayette.org. And that email address is listed on the slide for your reference. Please note that late or missing forms may result in a decrease or alternative choice of electives. Courses are also assigned priority in PowerSchool. AP courses and honors courses have slightly more scheduling priority in PowerSchool when we are running the loads. And we run those order of scheduling loads from seniors to juniors, then sophomores, then freshmen. The next several slides describe the online course request process. Students should log in using the website listed on this slide. They should use their student login and password. From there, as noted on the slide, they should click on the class registration tab on the left-hand side of the page. Please refer to the graphic on this slide for more details. From there, students should then click on the pencil in the right screen corner. They can select any courses in which they wish to choose, and then when they're finished, they should select OK. The picture below shows those details. You'll see the pencil in the right-hand corner, the ability to check off the respective courses being selected, and then the button OK to submit. Students should ensure that all areas have green check marks and that there are no red marks on the page. When this is correct, the student should hit the submit button at the bottom of the page 
And the following slide shows a reference of this image for the students with the submit button in the bottom right hand corner. Please print a copy and have your parents sign it. Students should also sign this. In person, students should return this form to their English teachers. Cyber students should be emailing it to schedulehs at southfayette.org. Please choose the landscape option when you do print the form. Thank you for taking the time to view our video on a review of the scheduling process at the high school. If at any point in time, you or your student has any questions, please feel free to email any of us. You may email Mr. Butts, assistant principal, any of the counselors, which include Mr. Hausman, Mrs. Martin, and Mrs. Sherrow, or please feel free to email me. Thank you very much.